Pledge of Allegiance today that will be led by Mr. Eric Shaw. Can you please stand at this time? If you'll buy it. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this lovely day you've got out there. It's nice and warm out there, nice and chilly in here. We appreciate all you've done for us and and, and the, the day you've created. Um, let us lead this college and make the decisions in your in your way and like and for the betterment the betterment of everyone involved. In the Lord's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll get things rolling today with the approval of the agenda. Everything good with that? I would like to make a motion to approve the agenda as presented to us. We've had a motion made. Is there a second on that? Second by Mr. Williams. Any discussion? Okay. Um, this will be a voice vote. All those in favor of approving the agenda, please say aye. Aye. Uh, anybody opposed? Okay. Moving on next, uh, number three, approval of the minutes, consideration and approval of the April board meeting minutes. I'll move to approve minutes. We've had a motion to approve this. Is there a second for that? Sure. And second by Mr. Shaw. Any discussion? <coughs> we'll move forward to the voice vote on this as well. All those in favor of the approval of minutes, please say aye. Aye. Uh, anybody opposed? Okay. We move on next to the consideration of the college financial report. And we'll turn the uh, program over to you, Charlotte. Thank you. Cool. Well, uh, the first part of your financial section, we look at, at the year-to-date comparison from this year to last year um, as of March 31st. So very similar to what you've seen, same pattern you've seen in previous months. Um, tuition and fees, chugging right along. Uh, of course, this is, this is March, so we've still got a, a registration going on for summer that will continue to, to push that number um, up. So that's good news. Um, other, other areas, very similar student aid, of course, is, is going to follow that same sort of uh, enrollment pattern. Big difference there is in your grants, federal and state grants, much lower this year than last year. We had some grants that simply expired last year. Um, so that's going to drive a big difference from one year to the next. Uh, the next page then looking at expenses. Again, the same pattern that we've seen in previous months. Uh, <coughs> very much right on track. Uh, salaries and benefits ahead of, ahead of last year reflecting the uh, pay increases that were in this year's budget. Um, saving a little bit of money on operating expenses and then the scholarships, of course, again, like I said, a little bit ahead uh, following the enrollment patterns. And then uh, on the third page there, revenues minus expenses as our changes in net position. You see we're quite a bit below last year, but very comparable once you factor out those uh, one-time differences related to those grants. So that's what's really driving that big difference. Following that, the next two pages are just the details of those same numbers. Uh, and then if you'll turn over to our next graph, the budget to actuals, um, these are our preliminary April numbers, which is 83% of the fiscal year. <coughs> the top half, they're looking at our revenue again. Tuition and fees tracking very well as over 90% uh, recognized. Again, still enrolling for the summer term, so that's looking very, uh, very optimistic in that area. Uh, again, the student aid following that same pattern as well as auxiliaries and so forth, um, following that same, same expected pattern for the year. On the bottom half of the page, sort of using that 83% as a guide, you can see most of your categories are at or below that spot. Uh, notable differences in student services and scholarships, which are actually called scholarship related. So uh, that's a normal pattern for that too. Scholarships fall more uh, semester to semester. So they're always going to track a little ahead. Uh, following that then uh, is just the same numbers. Uh, just in the detail. And then looking at the capital budget, uh, again, very similar to what you've seen in previous months. I think really hugely new there. And then uh, looking at our cash, <coughs> cash position, looking at the pie graph. Uh, this is our cash position at the beginning of May. Um, again, you can see uh, we're doing well there as well. Um, so we're looking to have a pretty strong end to our fiscal year, hopefully. Following that, we have our uh, 
our certificates of deposit held by the college. Uh, we do have one coming uh, up for renewal. We have that out to bid right now, so uh, we'll be renewing that three-month, $5 million uh, CD here soon. You'll know, see that on next month's report. And then following that on our bid report, we are, uh, we don't have this published yet, but we are about to publish the banking services bid. Uh, any day now, we're just finishing up the wording on it. Uh, we are past our three-year window on banking services, so we are required to bid that out. That will be on depository services as well as the branch. And then finally, uh, you see a list of budget amendments. Uh, nothing really major there. Most of it is just very sort of routine stuff uh, where we've filled vacant positions or um, just had unexpe uh, unexpected expenses. And that concludes my report. Any questions? Questions for Charlotte this time? Any discussion or questions? We will entertain a motion to approve the consideration of the college financial report. Motion right there. Is there a second? Second. And for second set. Uh, this is also a vote, voice vote. All those in favor of consideration of the college financial report, please say aye. Aye. Right. Any opposed? <clears throat> Charlotte, thank you very much. We move on now to the president's report, Dr. Payne. Thank you, sir. So, uh, as you guys might recall, we are involved and enrolled in the Higher Learning Commission Student Success Academy. Uh, this is an opportunity through the Higher Learning Commission to uh, sit and focus on um, a wide array of data and develop and determine a quality initiative, which is a standard part of our accreditation process. So today I'm going to ask Dr. Mary Beth Payne, our Chief Institutional Effectiveness Officer and Accreditation Li Liaison, uh, to introduce the Student Success Academy team uh, and take it from here. Okay, thank you, Dr. Payne. Well, the college has just completed the first of our three-year commitment in the Harvard Learning Commission Student Success Academy. And throughout this past year, the Academy team members have been highly focused on this project and have devoted a lot of time and effort. And I just wanted to point out, this is in addition to their, their normal duties of teaching and directing and coordinating and, and what they do here at the college. So they put in a lot of uh, time and effort. Um, so a few of them will be here today with us uh, to tell you about the academy work. But first, I want to recognize all eight members of the team. Uh, first, Director of Academic Assessment, Mr. Frank Ludwig. Accreditation Coordinator and Executive Assistant to the Chief Institutional Effectiveness Officer, Ashley Vernon. Assistant Professor of Early Childhood Development, Kevin Corman. Director of Enrollment Services and Student Development, Brandy Brooks. Director of Distance Learning, Dr. Ryan Bixby. Associate Professor of English, Jason Cowan. Instructor of Life Science, Kelly Hastings, could not be with us because she is administering the exam. This is a final tweet. Coordinator of Testing Services, Cassie Knox. So um, these are the eight members of the team. So thank you to all of you. And um, now we're going to move on to present on our first academy experience. I'd like Mr. Frank to come forward. So the, uh, the academy offers a very structured uh, process that is supported by uh, HLC scholars and mentors. And the first step in that is a series of, of inventories, and the first of which we conducted uh, in fall of 23, which is a data inventory. Uh, the goals there are to uh, gather everything we need uh, to examine from a very high level student uh, uh, cohort uh, success uh, here at Three Rivers. Be, and then, uh, the second goal is to identify uh, different ways that we might disaggregate this meaningfully uh, to get information on various subpopulations. And then finally, it's to really uh, try to identify the data that is most meaningful and most indicative of student success or challenges uh, there. The team of, of eight uh, then traveled in October uh, to Schaumburg, Illinois, where we were able to take part in a series of activities along with several other colleges. I think there were eight other institutions that were there. 
and we were able to interact with scholars and mentors, also interact with the other colleges, and, and take a look at this data inventory uh, in detail and, and discuss it uh, uh, among ourselves and also uh, to share some of those discoveries with the uh, scholars, mentors, and other um, uh, institutions that were, were there uh, working on this. Uh, and uh, then for the next step, uh, Ashley uh, will we'll tell you about the next. <laughs> Hello. Uh, as part of our academy work, um, the, the team expressed interest in holding focus groups. So this spring, we held three focus groups with area high school students who are actually enrolled in online dual credit or dual enrollment courses at Three Rivers College. Uh, the purpose of the focus group interviews were to gather feedback about the quality of our dual credit online courses with specific interest in how the students access uh, and use technology and the overall quality of the courses. Um, so the members of the, the interviewing team was actually myself, Mr. Ludwig, uh, Cassie Knox, and Brandy Brooks. Um, the students uh, are anonymous, of course. Uh, we promised them to, that they would be anonymous in all of our reports so that we could get their honest feedback. Uh, so in March, April, and May of this semester, we went to Popper Bluff High School where we interviewed six students, Sykeston High School where we also interviewed six students, and then we had three students from Neelyville meet us here on campus and we spoke to them as well. Um, during these interviews, the students were asked questions about how and where they access their course during the school day, um, what type of technology they use, including any sort of issues that might arise uh, related to technology, um, whether they felt the course outcomes were clearly communicated to them, uh, how they experienced interacting with their instructors and the feedback they received, just a broad spectrum of their experience in the online courses. Um, so we're still reviewing the results of those interviews and looking for potential areas of improvement, but we did receive a lot of positive feedback um, out of all the students who participated, all 15 of them, they all said that their overall experience with Three Rivers was positive, and that if they had to, they would choose to come back to Three Rivers again. And now to present on the second Academy Experience, Heather Corner. So um, Frank kind of touched on, you know, that we went to um, Schomburg in, in um, October. And so for our second meeting that we went to in March, it was a, a two-day um, academy. But before we had, um, before we went, they, HLC requested an initi initiatives inventory to be completed um, that we worked on during the spring of 24. And that inventory included um, reviewing student success and retention initiatives that had already been established and had been in place for the last five or five to ten years here at the college. Um, and then we had some more current ones that we were looking at as far as Raider Connect, which is our early alert system that we use with our, our students. Um, the implement, implementation of the tiered um, tuition model, day one access of the college textbooks, textbooks and materials and online course design, the Title III grant, and our ACHIEVE program. So um, in addition to the HLC inventory, um, the institution is currently serving, it's, or is examining how we are currently serving our students um, in the various populations of students that we have. So we are exploring the context goals and impact of initiatives and that are currently in place to support that student success. Um, and so the goals that we have are to discover the range of targeted strategies the campus has in place to support student success, determine if the initiative's objectives reflect the institution's priorities, student populations, and definitions of student success, and identify additional opportunities to meet students' needs. So you can kind of see how that plays into um, some of the things that Frank and Ashley shared. So while we were at the, um, at the round table, all eight members were present and it included um, a round table that we focused on that initiative's inventory and we were able to meet with the academy um, scholars and, and mentors um, and while we were there they led the team in analyzing our findings, 
looking at all the information that had been compiled, compiled, um, and then kind of directing us on our next step, which is the infrastructure inventory, which we'll be working on in September when we come back in 20, or September 24 in the fall. Um, and that's going to be exploring the policies and practices of the college and how they align um, in providing for students. Um, and then to present on the student services areas and initiatives panel presentations, Randy Brooks. Okay, so over the last semester, beginning in January, we've actually um, had five half day meetings um, to go over <coughs> some of the initiatives that we are beginning to identify that we just need to look, dig a little bit further into. So, the purpose of these panels. Uh, panel presentations was to provide the, the team with information focused on how each of the service areas and retention initiatives of the college both align and support our students. So the presentations that we went through were um, for Academic Life Strategies course, which is ACAD 101. Um, that's a program requirement course that all of our students take here. The Achieve program, of course, which is a federally funded TRIO um, program that serves about 200 and stu 250 students. Um, athletics, developmental education, disability services, dual credit and dual enrollment, external locations, the Office of Distance Learning, which of course manages Blackboard and our course technology, um, Raider Connect, which Heather mentioned is our early alert system, the Registrar's Office, the Rutland Library, Student Accounts, the College Store, Tutoring and Learning Center, and Veteran Services and Financial Aid. Um, after each of the panel discussions or presentations, the team was able to ask questions to the person presenting or the presenter um, to gain further insight. So this is really helping us hone in on um, all, of, all of the ways that these specific areas are interacting both with students, with faculty, and with staff here on campus and how they're communicating out regarding their services. This was a very, very positive experience for, I think, both the presenters and the team members. Um, and of course, the team members were able to gain some additional knowledge and insight to help us make more informed decisions as we are planning our proposed uh, quality initiative. So that kind of wrapped up year one. Um, I don't know if any of you have any questions for the team members, but the next steps are we're going to be compiling and analyzing all this information and data that was gathered by the team throughout the year um, for the next steps in, in the academy, which will begin in September uh, this fall. So we'll go move into the second year, which the second year is really uh, to be the part where the, the team will be developing what that quality initiative is um, for student success and retention. So does anyone have any questions for the team members or for, for me? Thank you very much. We'd like to thank you for your Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. I do want to recognize the entire team. Uh, they have spent a lot of time. They take this work very seriously, and they have been very dedicated in moving this project along. Uh, moving to the next event, we were fortunate to be selected by Governor Carson as one of the stops on his book signing tour. Uh, we were able to give him a tour of campus to show him some of the improvements that we've made uh, from some previous allocations. So all in all, a very successful day, and I believe the governor left pleased. Uh, and then our music department under Professors White and White uh, put on State Fair uh, as their annual musical and then finished the semester with their final recital spring concert, both vocal and instrumental. Uh, and I'm going to ask Mr. Corey Reynolds if he will come forward and speak about music bingo and potentially those snazzy costumes <laughs> that uh, someone was brave enough to wear. <laughs> so it was a 90s theme, and that's kind of what you see, I think, uh, captured there. Um, we had approximately 118 <laughs> participants. That was about 30 uh, more than what we had in the fall. Funds raised went to mental health awareness. Uh, we want to thank Haven House, FCC, and Missouri Highlands 
for sponsoring uh, the prizes and tables, and DJ Devin Barnes for donating his services. And unfortunately, uh, CJ Jameson wasn't able to be here today. She really should be the one presenting. Um, she worked very hard on this event to, to make it a success, and um, she is not able to be here today because of bereavement and loss, so our prayers should be with her. But I wanted to definitely make sure that she was acknowledged and given the credit that she is owed to. Um, can't say enough how much we appreciate her. She's a go-getter, so uh, that's about all I have. Thank you, Mr. Brown. And I'm going to call Ms. Catherine Clark to the podium to talk about the work that's been done in our ag program and at the farm. So I've kind of prepared a little like F524 breakdown of what we've done at the farm. I know you guys had some questions on how to present on what's going on out there. And if you haven't had a chance to stop in, stop in. You might be amazed. It's been a while since you've been out there. Um, we've cleaned it up a lot. It's no more great. dirt. Huh? No more dirt. No more dirt. No. Good. Um, it's, it's really pretty out there. And I have to brag on uh, Mr. Buxton, our farm manager. He's done a wonderful job of uh, helping out and getting a great herd established out there. So we have a great cow-calf operation out there. Um, our production goals are basically what would be beneficial for a student if they're going to do a cow-calf operation here in Southeast Missouri. So looking at animals that are going to be heat tolerant, you know, fly tolerant, all that good stuff. Uh, we've got some really good looking calves right now. Uh, you can see in the middle picture we have a Hereford bull. Um, see the bull in there. He's, um, curly is what I call him. He's, he's awesome. Uh, so really working on building our herd out there. Um, it's really cool because we have our first 3R brand on our replacement heifers that were born on the farm. So starting to raise our own breed, our own beef out there that uh, is through reverse born and raised. Uh, students are the ones that make management decisions. So you can see we sold 22 head last year. The ones that were sold, majority of them was our students going through and saying, yeah, let's sell this one. Or this one, yeah, this one's on it. She's a little angry, yeah, let's get rid of her. Or, you know, we went through and prayer checked them. Like, if they were open, that's the ones we got rid of. So a lot of student-led decisions, which is good, and that's one of our goals is making sure that our students are getting that hands-on experience. Um, especially a lot of them are road rock kids, so cattle side of things that uh, they've never really experienced. So it's great to see them in there, giving those shots, uh, working the cattle, have a uh, better respect for the beef side of the industry. Um, partnerships and events, we've been trying to get more people out there. Um, it's a great facility to have more events, and so we're trying to get as many events out there as we can, um, trying to build kind of you know, <coughs> people we like to eat. Uh, we're a close family, so trying to build that family atmosphere with our students and faculty. So we've had different cookouts out there, planning more cookouts for the next year. Uh, we had Area Bar Army that we hosted for the FFA. Um, 4-H, Mr. Boxton, um, his kids are in 4-H, and he's a wonderful cattleman. And he has worked with actually uh, Ripley County 4-H to offer some um, classes out there. So they have students out there that are coming in for the elementary, trying to kind of recruit to along the way. But they're very appreciative of it. Um, the extension is very appreciative of what we have going on. Heroes to Hives um, is a great program. We've got beehives now at the farm. They manage it. Um, they can do a program online, and then they come out and meet once a month. And they have, we actually have one coming in from um, Marshfield, Missouri, another one that comes out of St. Louis uh, that teaches the class. So on a Saturday once a month, they go out there and bring the veterans out there. They have a store out there that they're storing their beef stuff in, and then they'll go out and they, every month they have a different thing with different veterans. I've went to a couple of them, and every month is kind of a different group. It's not the same people, it's different people coming out there. And not only the bees, but they're enjoying the, the animal side too. You can tell that they really enjoy being out there on the farm. Um, along with the beast side of things. Um, Missouri Department of Conservation, we teamed up with them trying to get that connection going again for our forestry program side. They did the chronic waste testing site. They were very appreciative of it because the people came in and drove back out. It was really easy for them and it helped out. Once again, bringing more people on the farm, making more people realize what we have going on out there. Um, and then also, I forgot to put on there, we're going to be hosting um, district's equine contest next spring. So that's looking at almost 200 students from the district, southeast district, coming in on our farm, um, teaming up with Rodeo, helping out Chad. Chad and Amanda are amazing. I mean, it's a great, we have a great partnership going on between Chad, Amanda, and Fox and me of getting things out there and getting events out there and utilizing that facility. Um, you can see some of the goals we're looking at and um, kind of going forward with things we're going to focus on for the next year. 
I would like to, we're working on, we've got an area uh, set out for trying to put some strawberries and blueberries out there. I have a school science class, I have plant science class, this kids don't want to sit and listen to a PowerPoint, trying to utilize some more hands-on stuff for them to do. Um, those are crops that usually we can kind of get them established through the school year and hopefully maybe starting to pick by the end of the school year is why we pick those. Um, and, you know, I've kind of leaned on some help of different extension uh, horticulture specialists and things, and that's what they recommended too on the management side of things that, you know, pH is a huge part of blueberry crops. You know, still getting them those educational moments out there along with it. Um, the classroom, I think he's already discussed the classroom with uh, Farm Credit that we are greatly appreciative about and so excited about. And then uh, the summer, we're working on our water lines, pipe fence finished from the roadway. You can see there'll be more pipe fence being put up, so predominantly that. So we're working on getting some trees cut down that are dead through there, just cleaning it back up, making it look really good out there. Um, and then signage and outdoor lighting. So we've got different areas we're focusing on, but uh, we're going the right direction, definitely. It's great to see it growing. It's great to see it changing. Like I said, that herd's awesome. Uh, rodeo team's kicking butt too, so it's good too to have them out there uh, doing their thing. So that's our goal, wanting more people out there, wanting people to appreciate um, and enjoy it just as much as we do. And that's the point about it, hands on and getting them that experience. Questions you guys have? Is it really dirt? <laughs> yes, it is a dirt free ranch. Yeah, <laughs> you, can, you can come out at any point in time. Um, and I'm sure that Park will absolutely arrange for you to participate in prayer checking. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know what that was. Yeah. I had to ask. Yeah. Yeah. But we are more than, in, in fact, anyone, but Trusty Shop especially, we would love to have participate in this particular uh, farm activity. Mama, it's going to be a hard pass right now. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's interesting to see the students line up. I mean, we cut cash or you can come out that day, too. Oh, God, no. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll save you a souvenir for that one. I don't know. They have a meal right after. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> well, that was a part of it. All right. Thank you, Ms. Uh And I am very pleased to announce that the Teacher of the Year and Adjunct of the Year are Mr. Corey Reynolds, who you just saw uh, present, and Ms. Emily Thurman, uh, Adjunct Instructor in English. Uh, both of these dedicated professionals were recognized and selected by their peers, uh, then honored locally, and they will also be honored at the uh, Missouri Community College Association um, annual meeting in November. And I'm pleased to present Dr. Sonia DeCero. She is our distinguished alumnus for 2024. Uh, we had her reception on May 6th. It was well attended and a big hit. And she, of course, will be with us as our commencement speaker this Friday evening. On May 10th, we held our Student Excellence Awards. This is the kickoff, if you will, to our commencement proceedings. Uh, this is the first event where we recognize outstanding achievement amongst our students. These students are recognized by individual faculty members, and then we hold a ceremony on the Friday preceding commencement to honor their achievements. Then some upcoming events. Uh, May 17th, 2 p.m. in the Tenant Center will be our next RN Tenning. We have a full house. It's always a great ceremony. Then, of course, following that at 6 p.m., uh, what we have all been working for the entire academic year, commencement, our commencement ceremonies will take place on May 17th. Uh, EM week, EMS Week, Emergency Services Week, uh, our celebration for that will be May 21st, 12 to 3. We'll be holding that at the parking lot uh, by the Chris Technology Center and around the firehouse. Uh, and then Project Drive, this is a uh, grant funded program. We are offering free construction training for any May 2024 graduates. So uh, it, the entire program is absolutely funded. There is no expense to any student. A uh, wonderful opportunity to break into a career 
uh, that will serve our students well. Then we will be closed for Memorial Day, May 27th, and our summer hours will begin June 3rd. So we'll move to uh, 10 hour days, Monday through Thursday, and be closed uh, on Fridays. Then June 13th, we are hosting our next mental health conference, 8.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. in Robert W. Plaster Free Enterprise Center, room 108, which is the lecture hall. Then June 21st is the annual, the 11th annual Three Rivers uh, Endowment Trust Golf Tournament. Uh, all proceeds benefit students and operations of the Endowment Trust. That, Mr. Chair, is the President's report, and we do have executive session items. Any questions for Dr. Payne? Okay, we, uh, we're going to executive session. We will need a motion to go into executive session. And I'll I'll make that motion. There's a motion, we have a second. <coughs> And we'll make the second. This will be a roll call vote to go into executive session. Trustee Featherston? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Hendron? Yes. Trustee Shaw? Sure. Trustee Williams? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now in executive session. Uh, we're back in open session number seven, consideration of legal law personnel actions and associated documents. Dr. Hager, I would like to make a motion that we approve all personnel decisions and Attach those associated documents there too. Thank you, Mr. Shock. How about a second on that? Oh, sorry. A second on Mr. Williams. Any discussion on this at this time? If not, this will be a roll call vote. Trustee Featherston? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Hager? Yes. Trustee Shock? Absolutely. Trustee Williams? Yes. Next board meeting will be Wednesday, June 19, 2024. Hope to see you guys at commencement on Friday. Any other discussion, concerns? Anything for the group? Uh, Friday. Uh, I'll give you the password on it. We're going to meet over at the gym this time, Steve. Yeah. And there's a password to get you oh. through security project. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll say. All the, uh, this will be a voice vote. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Any opposed? This meeting is adjourned.